Her eyes and her appetites would bring a long line of men into her life and send one to his death. Hey y'all, I'm Christina and you're listening to History and Hearsay. As with many stories that are a hundred or more years old, when you research this particular story, you're gonna find some conflicting details. In today's episode, I'll be telling the details that are the most widely accepted, but I will also be mentioning a few times when there are multiple different versions of the story, whenever I think they're relevant to actually understanding the overall story. Born in 1880, Walburga Horschel, who went by Dolly, was a German immigrant who grew up on a poor Midwest Western farm in the United States. When she was 17, she got a job at an apron factory. Dolly was said to have a sunny personality. She was super charismatic, and it's said that everyone at the factory loved her. Dolly. Fred Osterich was the owner of this very successful apron factory, which was in Milwaukee, and as such, he was a very wealthy man. Dolly must have caught Fred's eye because the two were seen married. Now, while Dolly was charismatic, Fred was said to have had a very gruff manner about him, but it sounds as though Dolly was kind of a good match because it was said that Dolly was really good at smoothing things over with the employees once her gruff and demanding husband had ruffled some feathers. After Dolly and Fred got married, they started a family and Dolly stayed home to take care of their son. It seemed as though the two had a happy marriage for quite a while until 1910 when their only child, Raymond, passed away just shy of his 10th birthday. After this terrible tragedy, Fred, who already worked long hours, began drinking heavily and neglecting his wife. Dolly, it appears, was a bored housewife in her early 30s who had needs that were not being met. One warm autumn day in 1913, Dolly called Fred, frustrated to say that her sewing machine wasn't working. Fred told her not to worry, he would send over his repairman. When 17-year-old Otto Sanhuber arrived at the Osteris home, he must have been completely surprised when he was met at the door by the alluring 33-year-old Dolly, wearing only a robe, stockings, heavy perfume, and a smile. Dolly knew exactly who Fred would send if she called about her sewing machine not working. She had obviously seen Otto around the factory and had taken a liking to him. Otto was obviously very shocked at first, but this began Dolly's seduction of Otto in an affair that lasted nearly 10 years. Was her sewing machine even broken? What a hussy. Dolly and Otto ran about town doing their thing in hotels and her home, but it's said that they weren't very discreet and pretty soon nosy neighbors began asking some questions about the man who'd been hanging around. Dolly told them that he was her vagabond half-brother, but she must not have been very convincing because pretty soon some of the neighbors told Fred about the man been coming around their home daily while he was at work. When Fred confronted Dolly, some sources say that she denied it, saying he was a salesman, he just kept coming, you wouldn't leave her alone. But Fred shouldn't worry because she had finally gotten it all sorted out and he wouldn't be coming back. Now, there are other sources that claim Dolly actually admitted to the affair, vowed to end the relationship, and then Fred was okay with that. But the story about Dolly telling him the neighbors were crazy, it was just a salesman, seemed to be the more widely believed theory. And somehow the story was enough to convince Fred. Either way, Dolly had no intention of severing her ties with Otto or leaving her husband, who was very rich. So she came up with a plan to keep both men in her lives. She convinced Otto to quit his job and move into the attic of the home that she shared with her husband. Otto was an orphan and had no family to speak of, so no one would come looking for him if he suddenly went missing, so he agreed to move into her attic. Each morning, as soon as Fred left for the factory, Otto would emerge from his attic hiding place. He would help Dolly complete all of her household chores, and then the two would spend the remainder of their time between the sheets. Just before Fred was due to return home, Otto would scramble back up into the attic, which contained little more than a cot, a bucket, I guess that was his restroom, 
and a bunch of books that Dolly had gotten for him at the library. Otto had dreams of becoming a Pulp Fiction writer. So while Dolly played beautiful in the evenings to her husband, Fred, Otto remained sequestered in the attic, reading or working on his Pulp Fiction stories. Now, it appears as though Fred was starting to get the sense that something was strange was going on around his house, but he couldn't quite put his finger on what it was that kept making him feel so unsettled. He was baffled by the disappearance of food in the icebox and there was mysterious noises he kept hearing coming from the attic and it was said that at times he was even missing cigars but Dolly reassured Fred that nothing was amiss and she got pretty good at convincing him that it was just his overactive imagination made worse by his overindulgence in alcohol and too much workplace stress. You know it just hit me I think this is like old timey gaslighting. <laughs> Right? And though she was doing like this lady. There was even one point where Dolly convinced Fred to go to the doctor and get a tranquilizer to help him with all of these noises he was hearing because she insisted that she never heard any of them. Reportedly, one night, the two of them were lying in bed when all of a sudden Frank bolts upright because he had heard a man clearing his throat. Of course, Dolly's like, you're, what? You're crazy. I didn't hear anything. There's like rats up there or something. Like, dude, let it go. Now, you would think that Fred at this point would go up to the, at least check the attic. I mean, I can tell you. My husband will be up there checking the attic, like what is going on? But it was said that Dolly actually had a padlock on the attic door, which when Fred asked her, why is there a padlock on our attic door? Dolly replied that she needed somewhere safe to keep her furs. Okay, so Fred was clearly a successful business owner, so that seems to imply that he had at least some level of intelligence. The only thing I can think is it had to be the heavy drinking, right? I mean, either the alcohol really muddled his brain enough that he actually believed Dolly, or it muddled it enough just that he would believe her explanation that it was the alcohol causing him to hear things. I don't know, what you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. So things continue on like this with the trio sharing the same home, unbeknownst to poor old Fred. So at this point, it's been five years that this has been going on. At this point, Fred decides that he's going to open a West Coast factory, which means that he and Dolly would have to relocate to Los Angeles. Dolly agrees to this, but she tells Fred that she must purchase a home that has an attic. Apparently having an attic wasn't common in LA, at least not back then. So they're able to find a house with an attic. And once they've officially purchased this home, Dolly made sure that the now 22 year old Otto got there before the movers so that he could do a little construction in the attic to make his hideaway like however he wants it. Can y'all imagine how hot an attic would be in California with no AC in the summer? Like... That just sounds terrible, this poor dude. Once in California, Otto and Dolly continue on as they had in Milwaukee for the next four years until that fateful night of August 22nd, 1922, when Otto overheard a loud argument between Fred and Dolly. Otto became fearful that Dolly was in physical danger, and so he comes rushing out of the attic with a gun in his hand. Some sources said he had a pair of 25 caliber pistols, one in each hand. What really happened that night remains hotly debated. It's thought that when Fred saw Otto, he recognized him from the factory and became enraged. Maybe everything with the attic noises all of a sudden clicked for Fred in that moment. Who knows? Regardless of what actually happened, it is certain that Fred was shot three times by a 25 caliber pistol, killing him. As Fred lay in a pool of his blood with a bullet hole in his head and two in his chest, Dolly and Otto devised a plan to make it look as if intruders had broken into the home and murdered Fred. Otto looked frantically around the room for something that he could quickly grab. He settled on Fred's diamond watch, which he stuffed into his pocket, and Dolly hid herself in the closet. Then Otto locked Dolly into the closet from the outside before returning up to the attic. Of course, this was to give Dolly an alibi because how could she have shot her husband if she was locked in a closet? And this plan seemed to work pretty well. Neighbors heard the shots and called the police. When the police arrived into the home, they heard Dolly yelling for help from inside the closet that was locked from the outside. 
Dolly told police she had been pushed into the closet by apparent burglars while she was hanging the fur coat she had been wearing that evening. Once in the closet, she heard shots outside the door. Police were immediately suspicious of Dolly because when they questioned her about her relationship with Fred, she said they never fought. Like, not ever. The cops were like, Mm, yeah, okay, well, that's not even how marriage works, so. <laughs> Police also thought it was odd that Dolly was only able to identify the one missing item, which was the watch, because Fred and Dolly were very wealthy and there were a lot of valuable things in the home. Additionally, many of the neighbors had heard the shots and come running out of their homes, but no one had seen anyone fleeing from the house. Despite their strong suspicions that Dolly was somehow involved in her husband's death, police were hard pressed to explain how Dolly could have killed her husband while locked in a closet. At this point, police really didn't have anything and so no arrests were made. Now that Dolly was a widow, she used some of the proceeds from her husband's estate to buy herself another house. So, okay, great news for Otto. He gets to move downstairs now, right? Wrong. Dolly bought another house with an attic and moved Otto into the attic again. During all of his time in the attic while writing under a pen name, Otto had managed to get a few Pulp Fiction stories published. And with this money, plus a few nickels and dimes here and there that he got from Dolly, he was able to purchase a typewriter to keep his writing. All while, Dolly managed to get herself a new downstairs lover, a lawyer by the name of Herman S. Shapiro. But like Dolly's first husband, Herman spent long hours away due to his profession. So Dolly found herself with an opening for another downstairs lover to keep this whole thing going. Enter Roy Clum. While Sherman was away, Dolly would carry on with Roy. Though some speculate that she was mainly using Roy to help her get rid of the guns that were used to shoot Fred. Dolly persuaded him to ditch the guns, saying that she had this gun and it resembled the burglar's gun that was used to kill her husband. And so she didn't want to get in trouble or have anyone think anything, you know, of her. And so Roy, of course, agrees. You guys, this lady... <laughs> What magic did she have? I just don't, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not not trying to be ugly, but where is the magic? I'm not seeing it. Some people just have some kind of spark and people will do anything for them. Like, have y'all seen that where you're like, some people you look at them and you're like, mm, yeah, I can see it. Other people you're like, what? What? What, what is going on here? What am I missing? <laughs> So Roy takes the gun, he tosses it into the Libretta tar pits. And the story for the second gun, if there was one, is that Dolly Sweet talked a neighbor into burying the other gun in his yard. There's no like details that she was having an affair with this guy. So what was he getting out of it? You see what I'm saying? Like where, what's the magic? Even people they're not sleeping with her doing stuff for her. What girl? Do you give seminars? So the neighbor gets rid of the gun for her. But once Dolly was finished with Roy and decided to break up with him, he decided that he was going to go to the police with his story. She must have ticked him off. Now, sources kind of differ as to whether the police were actually able to recover the 25 caliber pistol from the tar pits. But the author of the book, The Attic Lover, wrote that they dragged these tar pits in vain. And finding the gun in the tar pits after all that time does seem almost impossible. Possible. But according to the Los Angeles Times, the police did find the gun. They reported that on July 12th, 1923, 11 months after the murder, police found the gun near the oozing tar. Some people still do speculate if the police had the gun or if the police actually just said they had the gun to try to like get a confession out of Dolly or something since they were so suspicious of her. And I mean, I guess if the police said that, then that could be why the newspaper reported it, even if they didn't have the gun. I feel like they would have had to have some kind of gun to arrest her. I don't know. Maybe the rules were different back in 1923. Regardless, the story goes that once the neighbor heard the news of the first gun, he then digs up the second gun out of his backyard and he turns that over to police. So on July 12th, 1923, Dolly was finally arrested. And with Dolly in jail, Otto was left all alone in the attic to fend for himself. So Dolly obviously is getting really worried about him. She knew that Otto's not supposed to come down from the attic and he was apparently very obedient. And so she tells her lawyer, boyfriend Herman, she's like, okay, 
please, can you go and buy some groceries and bring them to my house? My vagabond brother has been living in my attic and I'm worried that he needs something to eat. So she tells him, go knock on the wall or the attic or whatever, and her brother will come down. So Herman does as she requests. Of course she does. They all do. (laughs) But when he gets there, Otto is so excited to see another man. He hasn't spoken to anyone other than Dolly herself for nearly 10 years at this point. So he starts spilling his guts all about his and Dolly's relationship. He's so excited to see another person. He's like... And Herman gets super mad, as you can imagine, because it's supposed to be his girlfriend. And so Herman basically tells Otto to get lost. So Otto is obviously afraid. He flees from the house. And apparently the fact that Dolly had kept a man in the attic was not a deal breaker for Herman. Herman goes on to get Dolly released from jail. The story goes that all charges are dropped against Dolly because they weren't able to determine whether or not the guns had fired the fatal bullets because they were so like corroded or rusted or whatever or as some people think maybe the cops never had the guns to begin with either way dolly gets to go free yet again now i was wondering what herman had told dolly about the fact that Otto disappeared and i couldn't find much information on that all i can think is maybe herman told dotty that when he got there Otto wasn't there and she just thought oh well maybe he got worried and tired of waiting on me and just left or whatever. So whatever happened between Otto and Herman, I personally think that Otto was really scared because he did leave LA and move all the way to Canada. He ended up changing his name to Walter Klein and actually getting married. Meanwhile, still in LA, Dolly and Herman settle into normal life for the next seven years until 1930 when they too have a falling out and Herman took his mad self over to the police. Now, some sources say that their fight was over money and then Herman claims that Dolly threatened him while other sources say that Dolly actually threatened Herman with another man and he went to the police because he was scared that they were going to make real on those threats. Either way, Herman goes to the police and tells them all about this diamond watch that Dolly had given him as a gift during their relationship. The same diamond watch that had been the only item stolen during the supposed home invasion that led to Fred's death. Herman, as you remember, had served as Dolly's attorney, so he immediately recognized the watch and confronted Dolly about it. But he claims she said that she just found it in the cushions a few weeks later and never even thought about turning it into the police because she didn't think it was important. Herman claims he believed her story at the time, but then he goes on to tell police all about what he knew about the guy in the attic. This was a missing piece that the police needed. Both Dolly and Otto had warrants issued for their arrest. Dolly was arrested on charges of conspiracy, and Otto, who unfortunately for him had just returned to LA after nearly eight years of being in Canada, was arrested on murder charges. Dolly eventually dropped her story of the unknown assailants and told police the night of the murder, she and Fred argued. Otto, who of course was in the attic, overheard the spat and feared that Fred would hurt Dolly, so he had rushed out of the attic to defend her and shot Fred. This revelation stunned authorities and the story quickly made front page news across the country. Attic lurking Otto was dubbed by the media to be Bat Boy or the Batman of Los Angeles. Now, superhero comics were actually the descendants of Pulp Fiction, and they didn't exist quite yet in 1930. So Batman was not seen as some type of like gallant figure that we see him now. So this was definitely a negative thing. They were not giving him any compliments, calling him a bat boy. Dolly was painted as a lusty feminine fatale with an insatiable sexual appetite. A feminine fatale is defined as an attractive and seductive woman, especially one who is likely to cause distress or disaster to a man who becomes involved with her, who plays one man off each other in pursuit of money, which I didn't Google that. I definitely knew that definition already. The fact that Dolly began an affair with both her attorney, Herman Shapiro, and Roy Klum after Fred's death only solidified Dolly's reputation as a tantalizing black widow. After years of lewd headlines and many indictments, Dolly was somehow still seen as a sympathetic figure to the jury. See what I'm saying? 
Dolly magic. And because of this, Dolly's trial for the conspiracy charge ended in a hung jury with most of the jurors saying that they were leaning towards acquittal. And once again, Dolly walked away as a free woman. The prosecutors decided not to retry Dolly and the indictment was eventually dropped in 1936. For Otto's trial, he got himself a shrewd attorney who specialized in defending accused murderers. Otto confessed to the killing, but claimed it happened in a struggle over the guns. Pled not guilty by reason of insanity. Otto's attorney Wakeman played on the jury's sympathies by saying that his client had been a tool in the hands of a much older, more sophisticated, and dominant woman. During his trial, Otto told the jury that he was Dolly's sex slave, having sex with her more than eight times times a day. He was imprisoned by his love for her. On July 1st, the jury found Otto guilty of manslaughter, but the statute of limitations for manslaughter was seven years and it had been eight years since Fred's death. So the charges were dropped and Otto too was allowed to go free. No one served any time for Fred's death. Dolly was indeed a free spirit and seemed somehow detached from reality. Yet her likability in a pill helped her to avoid justice on more than one occasion and to find romantic relationships throughout her life. After she was acquitted, Dolly, still a very wealthy woman, found a new lover. Of course she did. And the two of them remained in Los Angeles together for the next 30 years, eventually marrying just two weeks before her death in 1961 at the ripe old age of 80 years old. After his release from jail, Otto returned to his wife and seemed to disappear back into obscurity until his death in 1948 at the age of 60. What a crazy story, huh? I can't help but think that if the roles were reversed and Otto had been a 17 year old young lady and Dolly had been a 33 year old man instead of a woman, things might have turned out differently. At the end of the day, Otto was only 17 and he seemed to be very innocent at the time that the 33 year old Dolly seduced and took advantage of him. If you think about a 17 year old boy today versus one back in the early 1900s, I'm sure they were exposed to a lot less. They were probably a lot more innocent, even though, I mean, a 17 year old is still 17, right? But if you think of someone back in that time when there wasn't as much access to a lot of things, it seems a lot more likely that she really did take advantage of him. And while Otto may have truly loved Dolly, it seems more of an, uh, like a brainwash type of way. I actually think it's really sad and I feel so sorry for Otto. Glad that he eventually got away from her and was able to go on and get married and have a life away from Dolly. Now there is one final theory to the story because some people think that Dolly actually killed Fred on purpose to be free of him but still have his money. And she just convinced Otto to go along with the story about him rushing in to save her from Fred. Maybe she convinced him that this would be a case of self-defense and they would both get away with it. In the end, if the justice system had caught up to them just a year sooner, Otto actually would have gone down for this one. So what do you think? Did they actually get away with murder? Let me know what you think in the comments down below and until next time, check out this video right here. What? Um, when I eat something and I drink this milk, it tastes gross. Okay, maybe the milk is bad. I'll get the new milk. Yeah. No, you pooped in the toilet? No. In my toilet? No. But this poop is the toilet. Okay, well, go flush it. I don't know, go out and close the door. We're not, you're not a poop detective. <laughs>